Hi, and welcome to Inside Michigan Volleyball. I'm Anthony Palladano. The Wolverines are off to another great start this year, 10-1 on the season, and coming off a win over 25th-ranked Northern Iowa last weekend. The 22nd-ranked Wolverines are out in front of their second home tournament of the year, and we talked to Mark Rosen about the team. All right, Mark, you guys are off to a very good start yet again this year. Did get a rare pre-Big Ten loss, but with such a young team, uh, how did you like how the team responded to that loss? Well, I think that, you know, losing is part of the process. You hate to admit it, and nobody wants, you know, none of us are very good at losing, and we don't want any more practice at it. But it does help us to identify some things that maybe a team could exploit on us. But also, I think it helps us figure out kind of who we are. You know, I think uh, it, was a, it was a gut check a little bit when we lost to Marquette. They played outstanding. Um, we certainly didn't play as well as I think we could. And, and then we ended up on the short end of it because they played better than us. And so then we had to look in the mirror and say, OK, this is what we learned from this. This is what we've got to do to go on. And I was really excited, a little nervous, but excited to see how our team would respond on Saturday um, after that. And you know, I thought that the, the personality team was really good. I thought our focus going into the next two matches was really good. And, and I think we did grow a lot from that experience. So especially with the young team, I think that losing isn't always bad, though we don't want to, we don't want to practice it anymore. Um, as long as we're learning something from it, as long as we're able to progress and move forward um, from that loss. A second straight year, you've had to deal with some early season injuries this year. Uh, Claire McElhaney, someone who you're relying on, has been a little banged up early in the year. But uh, Molly Toon has really stepped up in her place. Talk about Molly, and she seems to be, she's been very clutch in the big games for you. Yeah, you know, injuries are one of those things you can't control, and so you just have to be ready to roll with them. And, and certainly we believe that we have a, a lot of really talented players on our team, and that if somebody was to go down, we, we expect somebody to step in and be able to fill that role really well. And Molly's done that as well as anybody you know, ever has, and it's a new position for her. She's never really played on the right side. In high school, she was a middle. We recruited her to move her to the left side. She's been doing that very well. And then all of a sudden, the need pushed her over to the right side. And she's actually been really good. Um, it's, it's certainly got us thinking that maybe it's a place we should keep her there. Um, so she's, uh, she's, I think, not only her skills have been really good over there, but I think her she's brought a really good mentality to our team. And she's a very um, consistent competitor. You know, she's somebody who doesn't ride a lot of highs and lows. She doesn't get really emotionally up and down. And I think that's been really good. And if, if she makes mistakes, she comes right back on the next play and she comes back aggressively. And she's a very good blocker and that position requires to be a strong blocker and she's doing a good job with it. So really proud of what Molly's doing. And it's fun to get her on the court. You know, she's just a tremendous athlete. And so we want to try and, you know, find a place to make sure we keep her on the floor. Now you knew you were going to be without three of your players going in because they graduated last year mm -hmm. and they're all key parts. Uh, one, of the, one of them, Alex Hunt, was a, a huge part for you playing all around. And Lexi Irwin has really kind of stepped into that role early on this season. Is that what you envisioned for her and where's the ceiling for her? Well, and again, graduation is normal. You know, it's something that happens every year. So you don't focus much on, it doesn't do us any good to focus on what we lost in graduation because it's, it's going to happen every year. Um, what you're always going to do is make sure players are developing. And I thought, you know, Lexi Irwin, developed from, from last year to this year as much as I've seen any one player develop you know, in a, in a nine-month period of time. She's uh, really transformed her, her game physically. You know, she's much more physical than she was a year ago. She's much stronger. She's jumping higher. She's swinging harder. Um, but she also is transforming her game mentally. I think she's really working on being a much more consistent competitor and, and really uh, believing and seeing how good she is because she's highly talented. She's a great volleyball player, not just her athletic ability, but just her skills are very, very good. And at times I think she doubts that and, and unwarranted. She's a, she's a tremendous talent. And so I think she's starting to believe that a lot more and, and you can see it in her play. Um, it's been really fun to watch her progression and, and how far she's come in a, in a really short period of time. Is she maybe the most versatile player you have on the team in terms of being able to play all around? Absolutely, yeah. She's a great passer. She's a great defender. She's a great server. She's a great attacker. She's become a much better blocker. You know, she really is that, you know, that uh, six rotation, um, every skill of the game kind of kid. And, and I like those kind of players. You know, we've had a lot of those players over the, over the years, and she certainly fits that mold and, and I think is doing as, as well as any of those players in the past have done. You said in the preseason some of your freshmen were going to get pressed into duty right away, and they have some more than others. Uh, Tiffany Morales has uh, come on strong in the back for you. Talk about her skill set and what she's brought and added to this team. 
Yeah, this has been a great freshman class. I've, I've used the term a lot that they're very, they've been very appropriate. They're not, um, they're not this scared, timid group of freshmen that are kind of a, you know, feel like it's not their time. They're, they're confident. They're very confident and very uh, experienced. At the same time, they're not overly, you know, they understand they've got a lot to learn and a lot of ways to get better. And so I, I think they've just been very appropriate in the way they've approached it. And Tiffany is a great example of that, where she came in and she's competing with uh, some experienced players to, to get on the floor and to have a, a significant role. And she's done that very well. She's taken care of what she can take care of. She's worked really, really hard. Um, she's very skilled you know she was a very uh, skilled player coming out of club in high school and and I think she's competed really well and gradually kind of put herself in a position where she's making a, a huge impact for us and and yet I think still has a lot of room to get better which is exciting um, but she's been a, a great contribution this year in our ball control you know in our passing our service eve our defense she's she's made a great impact another player who's uh, all around game uh is pretty good and, and seems to be maybe in the mold of an Irwin, although not exactly the same type player. Uh, Kelly Murphy, freshman, talk about the impact she's had and how she's kind of settled in, found her role with the team. Yeah, I'm not sure I've ever watched another player in, in recruiting more than I ever I watched Kelly Murphy. And part of that was to try and figure out, is she going to be able to compete at this level? She's a good athlete. She's a very good athlete. But I, I wouldn't say she's a you know an elite athlete as far as just her, what, what you look at the, the numbers, the jumping, the but I tell you, she's an elite competitor. And uh, every time I watched her play, I walked away going, I just love the way that play, player competes. She's very skilled in all the areas, just like you talked about with Erwin. Um, she can do it all. And, and she's really good when the pressure's on. She's really good when, it, when the match matters. And I saw, I saw that a lot in club. I saw that a lot in high school. And we really felt like she could do that at this level. And, and she's showing that off the, you know, early on in her career. Um, she just is one of those kids that is, oozes intangibles, you know, and I think that as coaches, sometimes we look too much at the tangibles and, and kind of overlook the, t the intangibles. She's somebody that uh, she, she overperforms in every way because she's got such great character and such great, um, you know, mental moxie. Uh, talk about what you've seen out of Lexi Dana Miller here in year two. Yeah, you know, it's interesting for Lexi because last year it was kind of like she was the new piece and so there wasn't a lot of pressure on her. I think other players, maybe older players, were taking up some of that, those expectations and taking the pressure off her a little bit, where this year that's changed, where she's now one of the veterans. As a sophomore, she's one of the uh, the veterans. But she um, she's really doing a nice job at that. I think there's times where it's a, it's a struggle for her to try and figure out with, with so many new players on the floor who's going to be able to do what in what situations and in what roles, but I think she's figuring it out very quickly. Um, I, I think she's doing a tremendous job and uh, Aaron Virtue, our coach that works a lot with our setters, I think has done a great job with developing her over this last year and taking her to the, the next level. And yet I still think she, she has two or three more next levels to get to, which is, which is exciting. Um, I think she's, uh, she's really going to be the glue that kind of holds this group together over the next few years. Uh, we're out ahead of your second home tournament of the year, the Coke Michigan Invite. Uh, talk about that a little bit, and you have a special day against Eastern, the uh, Blackout Bullying Day. Talk about that, too. Yeah, this is a great culminating tournament, I think, for our preseason. You know, after this week, we head into Big Ten, and we've got three really good teams here. I think Eastern Michigan's got a, a very strong team that's one of the better teams they've had over the last few years, and so they're going to come in here and obviously, you know, a chance to, to play against a, an in-town team and, and to have a chance to, to uh, compete is going to be a big big opportunity for them, and they're going to be excited about that. So we, we know that's going to be a good challenge. Uh, Western Kentucky, which is a school that maybe a lot of people don't hear about in other sports, but in volleyball, they're very, very good. Um, they have a great coach. He's been there for a long time. They have a lot of very good volleyball right in their area, so a lot of those kids stay home. They're, uh, they're really good, and so they, they just knocked off Dayton, which was a big win for them last week, and you know, we know they're going to come in. And they run a little bit different style of system. They run a, you know, most teams go fast in the middle of the court and slower to the outside. They go slow in the middle and faster to the outside, so it kind of creates a real uh, interesting dynamic that we've got to try and defend. Um, you know, and then Duke is, is obviously a great respected uh, athletic program and their volleyball team is, is very strong. We recruit, we tend to seem to recruit a lot against them, so we know the players that they have a lot and some of our players look there as well. So it'll be uh, a great weekend for us and I think all three matches will be, be really strong. We are excited about the Eastern match because it's the, uh, our blockout bullying. It's the first time we've done that. We had a great response from the local schools. We really felt it was a great opportunity for us to maybe do, uh, do something that could help the community. Um, we hear a lot about bullying is a is kind of a hot topic out there in the news when in something catastrophic happens and maybe somebody has a real uh, uh, you know a situation that um, was very unfortunate and you, you find out that somewhere along the line they were bullied and, and that was impactful in that that uh, situation and so we felt like 
as athletes, as student athletes, we have an opportunity to, to be visible and to be able to maybe uh, help that cause. And so I'm excited that not only the volleyball program, but the other student athletes on campus have really adopted this as a great opportunity. So we have about 1,200 uh, elementary kids are going to be in here. It's going to be loud. It's going to be crazy. Um, but also, I think it's a great opportunity for us to, to let them know that, you know, we all have been in those situations as athletes or as coaches. I think people look at us and think that we would never be picked on or bullied. But absolutely, you know, and uh, I think for them to be able to understand that there's other people who have walked in their shoes and, and really done a great job to get to the other side of that. Um, we hope we can make, make some impact. The Coke Michigan invite gets underway for U of M at 11 a.m. on Friday as they play host to Eastern Michigan in the blockout bullying game. Prior to the match, there'll be an event over at Oosterbahn for blockout bullying. For Inside Michigan Volleyball, I'm Anthony Palladano.